David Wilkinson, man, it's funny how you can meet somebody and in a short span of time, they become like this big presence in your life and, and somebody that's really, you just, you know, wow, this person is a big presence in my life and a, 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 a kind of a key player. So I can say the same thing about you, Lionel. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a common friend kind of mm-hmm. said, you guys need to meet each other and... Uh, we had a beer one night, and mm-hmm. uh, wow, soulful. That's all, it, that's all it took. That's all it took. That's Simpatico, all it took. <laughs> kindred spirits, man, from the beginning. Truly, and your life is such a quintessential kind of story that I want this podcast to be about, because I really do want to encourage people to think beyond mm-hmm. where they've been, what they've done. Uh, And I really think uh, a lot of what motivates this, too, is I think the world we're living in, the culture we're living in, you have to do that. Yes. You can't afford to say, well, I've done this for the past 10 years. I'll do this the rest of my life. Of course, we know that. But maybe now, even the past five years, and just to, I think change is always scary, right? Uh, That's something that we definitely should talk about. That's a big thing. Right? It's inevitable, but it is scary for a lot of people. Yes. I, I heard someone say one time, David, that um, change is only scary when you're implementing it. When you choose to change, mm-hmm. that's one thing. But when change is imposed on you, uh, it's not on your it's not on your calendar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you got to spin. It yeah, can and adjust. Yeah, exactly. And you've done that. I've done that, but I really want the folks to hear your story Mm -hmm. of how many times you have pivoted and (laughs) detoured, or maybe it's not a detour. Maybe it's actually the main routing. Who knows? That's interesting. That's Yeah. I'm not sure I even know sometimes. (laughs) I I don't, for sure. Yeah. Um, There's a Thomas Merton. Thomas Mm. Merton is a... uh, Love Merton. ...is a voice that's been big in my life, and... There's a prayer that Merton says, I have no idea where you're leading me. Mm. And that always gives me a lot of comfort because I have no idea. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But let's let's get to your story. So you're one of the few people I know that was born in Hawaii. I was born in Hawaii, yeah, on Honolulu. Wow. So how long does David Wilkinson's life exist in Hawaii? One year. Wow. Now, we visit a lot. Because oh, yeah. we have family there. So you still go back? Oh, yeah. Quite often. In fact, we were there for Christmas. Um, not this last Christmas, but but the one just before. Wow. Had a nice family reunion with my uncle and my cousin. Christmas in Hawaii. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. That's... I can I can think of worse things. <laughs> we didn't we didn't pack any presents. We we were like Christmas is the the destination this yes. year. Yes, yeah, that's so, oh, that's so great. Uh, but my father, he was at the University of Hawaii. What uh, did he do? Well, my dad, uh, you know, the way I say it is, my dad uh, is from Gypsy blood, and I am as mm. well. And mm. a lot of people they assume, you know, a military kid. Mm-hmm. Well, my dad was in the Coast Guard, but the hopping that we did in my childhood was much more about university hopping oh, really? than it was because of where his next station was going to be. In fact, by the time they had me, he had already had Guam and all of his Coast Guard stuff more or less behind him. So he went to a lot of universities. Hawaii was not all of them. I mean, he went he Yeah, was give us everywhere. a quick uh, give us oh, a man. quick itinerary of well, the, your early uh, years. Of my okay, of my early years. Like well, where you moved. Yeah. So it was, obviously I was born in Honolulu. A year later, we moved to Phoenix, Arizona. I got to get the order right, Lionel. Sometimes wow. it's hard. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, this is when you're one year old. One year old. And um, eventually we moved to Merced, California, which is out near like Modesto. Oh, wow. Uh, out in the dust. Yes. Uh, and we were there for a good while. Um, my dad, at some point, and I'm not re- – I can't quite remember where it was. He taught mathematics on a reservation. That was what he did there. Really? And he's he was an engineer. He worked at plants. He, he, he has a very interesting career trajectory from his life, which I guess informs why, oh, <laughs> why mine has been kind of all over the place as well. Wow. Uh, let's see. So we did- so You're uh, in California. California, I think next was Nashville. For really? two years. My dad was at Vanderbilt working on his thesis. Wow. And so my backyard was the village. You know, I'd just ride my bike wow. all around Vanderbilt Village and- 
That was wow. a different time when you could do that a lot as a little kid. Next was Palm Bay, Florida, wow. which is not far from NASA, Cocoa Beach, Ron John right. Surf Shop, all that kind of stuff. Wow. Uh, spent, I actually spent most of my childhood there from fourth grade until I graduated high school. So that tells me right away you were familiar with being uprooted and yeah. change, even though, uh, same here, I was kind of stationary after about fourth grade. Mm-hmm. And mine was only one move, but you had a bunch. So, Well, what's interesting is I used to, when kids or people would ask, you know, oh, well, you've never really had any place to hang your hat. And mm-hmm. and I used to, it wasn't a negative thing, but I would think like, yeah, my dad, he's got gypsy blood. We're nomadic people. We've moved all around. And what I realized was, Lionel, from the time I graduated high school until now, all of my choices, I've actually moved more now Wow. From college to, to present day than I did during all of my childhood. I mean, I was in uh, Arkansas, Texas, Colorado, Indiana. Dang. So, uh, uh, and, and then here eventually. 